the story's kind of crazy. I think you guys are in for a little bit of a treat. So here's the exclusive, is that obviously it was a coordinated attack. Obviously, he's in cahoots with the Chinese media. When you open your phone and you're on the front page of fucking everything, for a joke, whatever you do, do not apologize. Hey guys, Trigonometry needs your help. We took a big risk creating the shop. And your Farage, to change that, that isn't going to happen. Tony. So we had, uh, when we had Uncle Roger on the show, he was like, it's so good to be on the show that you do when you get cancelled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so welcome. Yeah. Uh, you were cancelled a while ago, that we haven't really talked much about it, and we were hanging out the other day, and it's something we really wanted to discuss with you. So tell everybody what happened, first of all. Well, I mean, this was in May of 2021, and I was doing a very routine Thursday workout set. I mean, very routine. It's called The Secret Show, and it's called that because none of the names are announced on the show, um, which means that you, as in my position, you know, as someone that's been doing this for over a decade and a half, stand-up comedy, you know, you don't have any pressure on you, so you don't have to necessarily do your A material. Um, you have a chance to work out new stuff. You can bomb if you want, technically. I mean, I don't go in with those intentions, but it is that kind of show. So it's literally the last show that you would expect to get canceled on. It was at a <laughs> big aluminum bar on 6th Street called the Balkan Gas Company, which we made our temporary home. Um, during the pandemic when Joe was building up his club. So again, just a throwaway set on a throwaway night, a throwaway show, a throwaway lineup, just no expectations of anything. Very routine Thursday. And, um, and uh, I roll in and I always get to go on whenever I want on that show because technically how sad of a world this is, but I'm the big celebrity on a show like that. That is sad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Depressing. <laughs> um, so I walk in, there's a comedian on stage, I recognize him as Pang Dang, a guy that I had open for me quite a few times in Dallas, Texas. Pulled him out of the bucket on Kill Tony oh, many years ago, five, six years ago. I thought he was charming. Um, and, uh, you know, very Asian. So it's like different than me. So it's fun to have someone like that open mm. for you. Um, so he opened for me a few times in Dallas. He was on Kill Tony uh, at least once. And so I knew that he knew me, I know him. And he's going on and on during his set about how white people are so bad and Asian people have done all this great stuff. And, you know, this is during uh, what they were trying to make um, appear to be Asian hate time. Like that was different during that time um, because there was a lot of homeless people that with mental illness attacking Asian people in New York City. So the media tried to make that a storyline, like it was some, you know, epidemic that's happened. Yeah, like people in a comedy club need to be lectured about it because that will stop homeless people in New York. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, wild what the media covers and what they don't cover. And uh, it was Asian Heritage Month, month, which no one knew at the time. That was, that was never a thing. I do a thing to this day where... If I meet a likable Asian person, I ask them, hey, do you know when Asian Heritage Month is? And they never know. <laughs> <laughs> it's May, by the way. I'll never forget that one. <laughs> anyway, so he's going on and on. And he's also, uh, I do believe he went slightly over his time. This is There's just a thing that I've always done. I was built in the darkness of the comedy store in L.A. at a very dark time with very, you know, the comedy wasn't even that cool yet. It was more of a carnival type of thing back then. The uh, leading, the, you know, Chappelle was retired and Dane Cook was on top. And it was like, it was just a dark time for the art form. And there was no Netflix. There was no real, you, there was no YouTube specials. So it was just up to HBO kind of and Comedy Central, which was a sinking ship. Anyway, my point is that the time when I started, when I was constructed as a comedian, was so dark. And I've always been a maker, funner of people, a roaster before you know, that was even a famous word. You know, it wasn't, you know, if I could take you back to 2007, you'd be surprised to know that there were roasts. They called them roast. Oh, there's the old roast with, uh, um, 
D. Martin, and there's the Comedy Central roast that happens every other year. But it wasn't a term like it is now. Anyway. So I got good at it. I got really, you know, I worked on it. And so I became known for that. Everybody knows that I make fun of people. Anyway, so cut back to the night, that show. I am already frustrated because he's going a little long. I just want to get up and get out of there. He's saying that white people basically ain't shit. And the it felt like it was kind of like, you know, another thing about that show specifically is sometimes they get a dumb crowd. Yeah. You know, they're going to a workout show on a Thursday night. They don't know who's going to be there. So they're kind of chuckling along. And I'm thinking to myself, these fucking idiots are laughing at fucking, you know, kind of like, you know, I don't want to say lefty leaning, but it kind of was that night. A groany, lefty leaning kind of crowd that's kind of like, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> not laughing, but <laughs> giggling at this stuff that, that he was saying because they felt like. He had the timing of it being funny. Mm -hmm. If you watch the video, it ain't really funny. Anyway. So it's all boiling up, and I figure, okay, I'm going to take a few jabs at him. By the way, I didn't even know he was Chinese. I was going to use the C word on him, whether he was Japanese, whatever. You know, it didn't matter to me. I was just in the mood to use a funny, dark word. That's how I often establish my sets at the top. I like to hit them so that the rest of the set they're like okay we know what we're in for with this guy right um so yeah it happened i made fun of him the famous uh very well edited by him clip Hello, good evening. Hello. 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 Chink that was just up there. <laughs> All you fucking race trainers are hooping and hollering. I'm back there watching you puking in a fucking bucket. <laughs> oh, we make it a gunpowder. Oh, you extra soy sauce. Oh, you borrow money from us. And you guys just eating it up, you fucking pussy. Fun facts about the moment that it happened were was, um, um, you know, I had a camera rolling. Um, for my set um, that was rolling throughout the night, we don't ever do anything with anybody else's set, but he didn't know that there was a camera rolling throughout the night. And when he found out that he was bringing me up, he asked Red Band, the co-host um, and producer of Kill Tony, a guy that I've worked with, we've made, you know, worked together for over a decade, um, he asked him, it's his show, if he could record his set which is, you know, rare in Texas for that, Austin for that to happen, but Red Band gave him permission. Red Band thought it was interesting that he asked after he found out that he was bringing me up. That's something to remember for later. This story's kind of crazy. I think you guys are in for a little bit of a treat. Um, and I notice that someone's recording from the audience, and it was the friend that he asked to record his set. But I ignore it. Um... Uh, I, I, I noticed that it ends a couple minutes after I'm up there. I'm already into material, so I don't care. Who cares if they recorded me making fun of Pang Dang, <laughs> you know, on a random Thursday show? No big deal. If anything, I figured if anything were to happen with that clip, he would post it under the type of uh, caption of so fun to be roasted by my pal, you know, someone that I look up to, <laughs> literally. Um, so uh, that's that. That was a Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday night. And I have, for some reason, this crazy dream that I'll never forget. And this is like totally off subject and kind of corny. But I have this weird dream about my old house and I'm in the backyard of my old house and there's another floor above that was never there. And I'm looking and I just go, what is that third floor? And I go in and everything's different. You know how weird dreams are. And I'm going up this like ladder spi or spiral staircase. It's all weird. And it's like all old creepy shit. There's like old dolls on the walls and stuff. And it's just creepy. One of those weird, what is all this? What does this mean? Like nightmares. And I wake up and it's like, I think like 4.30 or 5 a.m. or something like that. It's Tuesday morning. And I look at my phone, because I'm like wide awake, kind of like, uh, you know, you want to go right back to sleep, but the dream was so weird that you're kind of like, ugh. So I'm looking at my phone and I check Twitter for some reason, 
and I have it says, you know, when you hit the max, it says just says 20 plus. Yep. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, that's weird. Mm -hmm. So I went to bed, whatever, four hours ago, probably checked it then or whatever. And I click on it and it's all these misspelled, diabolically like weird words in wrong places. Ass you are, <laughs> fuck. Fuck of you. You got messaged by Yoda. A lot, yes, a lot of, I mean, just every- Asian Yoda is yeah, like going. Different combinations of words. You, you, you suck, fuck. <laughs> Nothing will you be, ever shall you fail. Like, I'm like, what is all this? I mean, it sounds mystical. Oh, I know. <laughs> and I'm literally like, what is going on? What in the world is going on? So I end up clicking on some of the profiles to see, like, what are they even referencing? Like, you, normally if you click on something, there's like a video or something under that, it, you know, and then you see what they're commenting on or anything, but there wasn't anything to comment on. But I click on another profile and another profile, and I'm clearly seeing that it's Asian, but all these people have zero followers for some reason. Zero posts is a big thing. Very common with this. So I have no idea what's going on. And then I find one that has a video. Um, and there's Chinese captions and then there's a whole Chinese letter, um, Chinese written article underneath it. So I copy and I paste it into a translator. And it says, this is where things get weird. I think you guys will appreciate this because my cancellation is kind of special and weird in a way. Um, kind of like you, Tony. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. So I translate it and it literally says, Chinese American comedian Pang Dang was, um, what are they, what, what was the radical terminology that they used? I mean, it was, uh, you know, was racially, Whatever. I can't even. I can't even think of it. It's racially abused. Oh yes, something like that. Just ridiculous verbiage um, by Tony Hinchcliffe. It doesn't say roaster. Doesn't say comedian. I find it all so interesting. And um, it said comedian Pang Dang tweeted at eleven fifteen a.m. that this and it was what he said. But what's interesting, if you remember, is that it's 4.45, 5 a.m. 11.15 a.m. on Tuesday, which I'm reading in the translator, hasn't happened yet. I go to Pang Dang's Twitter to see if he's tweeted anything, and he hasn't. Yes, there is no video. There is no tweet. 11.15 hasn't happened yet. So I'm like, I don't know what any of this means. This is so weird. Who gives a shit? I'm going back to bed. Fall asleep, wake up an hour later, hundreds more. You fuck, die, shit, brain, <laughs> brain shit, fuck, you, die, 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 you gonna die, die, you gonna, gonna, you die. I mean, all of these things. And I'm just scrolling, like, what the fuck is going on? It's getting bigger. I fall asleep, wake up an hour later, it's getting bigger. Now it's like I wake up and I'm actually awake now. It's like 10.30. I check again. Pang Dang hasn't tweeted this thing. What is going on? What is this article? 11.14, 11.15. And now I'm looking at it because I'm getting all of these things from this one big Chinese article. It makes sense now. It's coming from China. They're not allowed on Twitter. So that's why they have zero posts. That's why they have zero followers. This is their one way of harassing somebody in America it's by creating a fake screen name or whatever, logging on and saying a bunch of jibber jabber out of place bullshit. 11.15 happens and there it is. Pang Dang tweets. And I remember seeing it with zero likes and zero retweets. I saw the tweet, I saw the video. The interesting thing that I forgot to mention is that in the Chinese one, it's in Chinese captions. I think it's like neon green or something like that. And these American captions that are tweeted at 11.15 in English are neon green. So immediately I'm like, okay, whoever made that, made that. <coughs> and this was a coordinated, without a doubt, this was coordinated over the weekend, an attack on me. So blatantly, blatantly, and this has never been, you know, I never blew this up 
anywhere or anything. This is exclusive trigonometry. <laughs> Uh, this is what we built this channel full time. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I mean, I made it through this. I'm w wildly more successful, thank God, than I've ever been. So here's the exclusive: is that obviously it was a coordinated attack. Obviously, he's in cahoots with the Chinese media. You know what I mean? Like, um, uh, it's just blatant. They did a report about a tweet that didn't happen. And they fucked up because they didn't get the timing right. Yeah. However, the time zones or whatever, somebody fucked up because <laughs> they leaked this story before it even happened. So 11.15, the tweet goes out. And again, right then in that moment, I'm still thinking to myself because I haven't put it together. That this is a cancellation, that this thing's going to blow up. I'm literally thinking to myself, bang, dang, what the hell? You, you didn't write this right. Like what he wrote in the caption was, whatever, um, it's uh, terrible that I was um, insulted in this way, blah, 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 happy Asian Heritage Month, hashtag Asian Heritage Month, hashtag whatever. He tried to get as much traction as he could. And I'm thinking to myself, literally still at that point, I'm like, his caption's wrong. Like I'm like, I wanna, I'm gonna hit him up and be like, yo, fix your caption you're making me look bad <laughs> i had no idea you thought yeah. what was happening is what happens between comedians which is when we take the piss out of each other yeah. we we make it look like i've been insulted but it's a fucking joke exactly mm. so you hit him up no response and i hit him up on instagram no response and i hit up my buddy who also has him open for him i go hit up pang dang have him call me what is going on because this thing is starting to click 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 100 likes 500 likes 800 comments the ratio on it was insane because this is also we're in like almost peak virtue signaling <laughs> time may 2021 is wow. like oh yeah oh yeah i think the vaccine's just rolling out right yeah. around then i mean everybody's just you know it's a weird fucking time we're 11 months out of george floyd <laughs> but but still you know most of the a lot of the country closed closed again reclosed so just a weird time for anything to happen. Um, and um, so my buddy says that he talked to Pang Dang and Pang Dang doesn't want to talk to me. Which is also so interesting because he starts going to media outlets immediately, blowing this thing up. I mean, you know, I'm getting hit up by everyone. It starts coming in. My agents, my managers, Washington Post, New York Times wants to talk to you because everybody's picking up this, you know, story that involves race and these disgusting, disgusting media people want their clickbait. And what am I going to do? Really? Am I going to say it was a joke? <laughs> That's my style. But of course, they all write it up. None of these journalists have any integrity or common sense whatsoever. I thought news was fake before. But let me tell you, when you're in the storm, you're like, holy shit, these motherfuckers, if you Google me, the first thing that pops up is Tony Hinchcliffe is an American insult comedian, famous for making fun of comedians and writing for the Comedy Central roasts. Like, it's literally the backbone of what I do. Even though I've been doing stand-up comedy for 16 and a half years, I'm best known for making fun of comedians, whether it be writing on the roast, hosting Kill Tony, and just in normal life. If you see me in a green room, you know, whatever. It's just what I do to everybody. I hold back. Anytime I see anybody, I scan them. Dee -dee 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 -dee, <laughs> and I think of what I would say. It's a defense mechanism from having too big of a head when I was in kindergarten. <laughs> the same size head that I have now when I was in kindergarten, but on a little body. So like, there's my chin, and there's the top of my head, there's the rest of my body. So you had like one of those wobble heads. Yes, big time. I mean, it was fucking grotesque. <laughs> But it's the same size head that I have now, so I grew into it. Yeah. It only took an extra three feet of growth to fit into it properly. I do feel sorry for your mother, though, Tony, if that was the size of the head. Well, I was the fifth kid of hers, so I came out like a, <laughs> I came out like a water slide. That thing, was, that thing was ready for me. My mom's got a giant, giant pussy. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, so it happens. My agent says 
don't worry, we're gonna get through this, everything's gonna be fine. My manager, who I actually really, really, really um, liked at the time, was like, I'm here for you, we're gonna stick with you. Um, so, as it's all happening, you know, just dread kind of is setting in, but also I'm like, this is fine. News articles, who cares, this is gonna blow over. I go have dinner that night with my girlfriend at our favorite little sushi restaurant. I'm starving, but I also don't have an appetite. And I talk to Joe, and he's like, dude, this is not good. I'm like, oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) Now I know it's not good. Now I know something's wrong. Because it's just a bad time. He's like, this is bad news. And, you know, there's a lot of fucking death threats on you coming in. I'm seeing a lot of hate. Let's not do, let's, why don't you take a couple nights off of these shows tomorrow, just little throwaway <coughs> shows at a little dinky comedy club around the corner, which is fine, who cares, right? Take a couple well, nights off, I don't ever get to do that. Um, but once they take my name off of that lineup, um, then there's a new news article. And the news article is, Tony Hinchcliffe removed from Joe Rogan shows because of racial blah, 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 blah. So now people online are going, ha ha, your buddy just stabbed you in the back. Shame on Joe. So, I mean, you know, these people don't know anything. They don't know that there's a throwaway 20 minute set anyway. But yeah. they smell blood. Exactly. And that's all anybody cares about. So now there's a new news article that night about Tony Hinchcliffe off of Joe Rogan shows. So it keeps it going. There's a new news cycle. Um, The next day, it's still going. And at the time, it's funny we're talking about this, at the time, Israel and Palestine were bombing each other, (laughs) left and right, back and forth. It was probably the last big one until this one that just started a couple days ago. But I remember that because I'm like, why is the news not talking about this? Why the hell are they talking about a dirty comedian at Vulcan Gas Company on a Thursday night in Austin, fucking Texas? Like none of an insult comedian. None of these things are adding up to me. Like how in the world? What is happening? How am I the news? How is me making fun of some completely unknown comedian that has probably seven minutes of good material to his name? How is this the world news? So, but it is. I wake up the next day, and by the way, I couldn't eat the sushi after that. I couldn't eat that night. I'm starting to get like sick. I'm starting to think, holy shit this is bad I'm pacing continuously are you thinking my career could be over here could be could be it's what it kind of seemed at the time which is crazy to me because I'm like there's just no way I can't I can't get in trouble for making fun of people that's like you guys getting in trouble for asking questions (laughs) that happens (laughs) (laughs) that's the world we live in (laughs) To get in trouble for what you do and what you're supposed to be good at is crazy to me. You guys leave your eggs out? Is that a British thing? Yeah. Yeah. Are you fucking serious? You don't keep them in the fridge? No. No. It's amazing. You guys are... Okay. (laughs) Trying to focus. (laughs) No way. That's crazy. Um, I've never seen that in 39 years of living in America. That's a British thing. Yeah. How you just leave them out all the time? You don't need to put them in the fridge. You don't have to. You don't have to. You have to leave this in. Yeah. You don't edit. You don't edit this, right? No. Motherfuckers leave their eggs on the counter. How how much of your percentage of listeners is American? About forty percent. And 60% British? No, 40%, 40% British, 20% the rest of the world. Greg's out. Put your eggs in the fucking fridge. <laughs> this is why we beat their ass in the war of uh, revolutionary <laughs> times. Okay, so anyway, here's where it starts to get cooking. Because the next day I'm like, well, yesterday was crazy. No way I'm going to be the world news today. <laughs> <laughs> and at about... Um, I also messaged the venue in which we were doing Kill Tony at the time, a uh, a really, really, really um, small uh, venue here in Austin, Texas that famously is like a small corporate um, venue that I only 
chose as the home of Keltoni when we first arrived here because one of my very good friends, Gary Clark Jr., is a part a partner in the place. However, he doesn't run the place. He he's not hands on, and he was in Australia at the time. Um, very busy with some very busy stuff that I won't get into, but he was out of the loop being a creative genius. And, um, and I, I messaged, um, the running partner of that club. I go, Hey, stuff's crazy right now, but it's going to blow over. Trust me. If you want to talk about it, give me a call and I'll explain everything and how we will execute moving forward. Um, again, very small venue. I was, I always felt like I was doing them a favor by having the show there. Very, 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 very left leaning, um, venue, uh, to where they restricted how many people were in the audience, so much space in between the audience. And again, it's May, 2021. We're like, what, what, what are we doing here? Cause we're doing stand up shows where people are shoulder to shoulder every other night of the week, basically. But I was playing along with them, being a nice guy. And um, so I go, hit me up if you have any questions or whatever moving forward. And um, that was the day before I messaged them at about whatever it was, 11 or noon the next day, they put out a press release saying, we're no longer the home of Kill Tony. We do not believe in racism of any kind. Uh, and we find his words to be intolerable, whatever. Again, this jargon, I don't even remember. There's a part of my brain which remembers a lot of shit that won't allow myself even the opportunity to remember what these virtue signaling morons, both them, Pang Dang, I'm realizing right now, you're watching me realize that I can't remember the, the actual verbiage because I won't let myself it's so ridiculous to even do that. I just find virtue signaling to be literally the most disgusting thing in the world. Be a good person or don't be a good person. Don't make it look like you're a fucking good person. Anyway, so they put that out. So guess what? That's a news story. That's the new news story of the next day. Uh, this venue, which by the way, it's the service is terrible at the venue. I've seen so many bugs at this venue. Either you know the venue or you don't know the venue. Don't go there if you know it. And if you don't know it, don't look it up and don't go there. Um, there you go. So, uh, so now that's a new news story, even though I helped them throughout the pandemic from, uh, from December of 2020 to May of 2021, they sat empty other nights of the week and I gave them liquor sales and a full audience and the coolest show in town every Monday, packed it as much as they would let me pack it. I could have done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more people, but they wanted to appear like they cared about the safety of <laughs> Texans that wanted to see a comedy show. So now there's a new news story. It sucks. And I'm watching even my favorite news outlets. It sucks when your favorite ones start covering it, right? Fox News, comedian, goes on racist rant. I'm like, what? <laughs> Come on, guys. You're my guys. You can't do this to me. Anyway, everything's covering it. Um, and, uh, and what I chose to do because I was so stressed out is I went golfing with Ron White and another really good friend. And I'm explaining to them what's happening. And these guys live in fucking high rises and castles and ranches and shit. And they don't know shit about shit, especially being canceled. You know, Ron's a class act. And I remember I, uh, I took my girlfriend with me there. So she's driving the golf cart and we were doing this thing where each hole, when I would get back in the cart, I go, anything new? And she, <laughs> and she was refreshing Tony Hinchcliffe. It's a good way to relax. <laughs> it was crazy, by the way. And as you could probably guess, the worst game of golf I've ever had in my life. It's so interesting to see that like, you know, it really is that game. It really is. <sighs> It's a game of mental strength and not being distracted, not being stressed because little tiny things, you know, going the other direction or farther from the hole than I was before, like comically bad. And uh, yeah, so every time I go to the golf cart, it was something else. 
it was weird that I was torturing myself that way, but I was just waiting for the thing. When you're in this like this, if you want to know what it's like to if people listening, since you guys probably do know, but what it's really like is you're waiting for the storm to pass. So you're kind of looking out the window to see if there's any light coming, <laughs> right? And it's, that's all I was doing. Yeah. I wasn't like obsessed with myself. It's obsessed. It's, I was obsessing with. It's got to be any second now. Any <laughs> second, there's going to be not another news article. And, and there she goes. You know. Yeah, three minutes ago, the um, L.A. Times. Um, seven minutes ago, Fox News. Yeah, they wrote another one. We go another one. You know, it's like it's the same ones are writing other ones. And then at about four or five p.m. that day after I got home. And I'm really thinking, well, this is this is it. It's been a day and a half of this. This is this is any second now. I get a call from my agents, um, very very big fancy agents in LA. That um, you know, I left a huge agency to go with them. Took a chance. It worked for years. I doubled my money and tripled my money with touring with these big fancier agents. And I get the call, and they go, Tony, uh, really bad news. It's coming from above, but um, we have to let you go. Um, we can't associate ourselves. Uh, this is not our choice. It's coming from above. You know, these pussies always blaming someone else, which is just ridiculous. All the promises of a bright future and building a crowd and all of this stuff. Um, so guess what? That sucks. But you know what sucks even more? Because that's another news cycle. They put out a fucking press release saying we disassociate ourselves with Tony Hinchcliffe and racism of any kind. So, boom. CNN. Boom, 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 boom. Now it's a day and a half. And now that's the biggest story. Dropped by agents. WME drops Tony Hinchcliffe. It's the biggest story since the whole thing even went. Um... So there we are now, and my manager stuck with me the whole time. And uh, again, to know what it's like as a comedian when it's a joke, when it's not right, what's happening to you? You know, I see people. It's funny because getting canceled gets clumped in with people that should be canceled. Your Bill Cosby's, your Harvey Weinstein's, your this is and that's rapists and sexual <laughs> assaulters, disgusting humans, and it kind of gets clumped together getting mm -hmm. canceled. But there's a whole slew of your Joe Rogans, your Tony Hinchcliffe's, your Shane Gillis's, your Ari Shafir's, people that, well, what? You said something on a podcast? Which is interesting, because this is even different than that. Again, I'm scrambling in my brain the whole time, like, wait, even these guys got in trouble for something they said on a podcast. How am I getting in trouble for something that I said on a stage at a comedy show to another comedian? It, why, it still, to this day, makes no sense to me, but I get it. The disgusting big media wants their clicks, and, you know, they were bloodthirsty at the time to see a, especially, I think, a Texan, which made the story more interesting to them, whereas just a year or so earlier, yeah, a year earlier, I was a Californian. I don't think it would have rang the same, their headline, you know, comedian in L.A. gets in trouble for making fun of Asian comedian. I think Texan sounded better. Um, <laughs> so there we are. Oh, yeah. So what I was going to say is when you get canceled for a joke and it's not right, what's happening is you're getting, I'm getting phone calls continuously from the best comedians in the world, all my best pals, and some people who at the time were even my best pals, they were reaching out just to give advice or ask how I'm doing, this is so wrong, everybody was on one side and one side only. There was a couple that are like, geez, why'd you have to go like that? Why'd you have to go so hard? Like, Shut the fuck, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. But everybody had different advice. That's what's interesting. That's where things get really fucked up. And I mean, I'm talking about geniuses. I'm talking about the 10 best stand-ups in the world, except for Chappelle, Louis, Chris Rock, Jerry Seinfeld. Very short list of people that didn't call me. But everybody else had different advice on 
one guy says you should write a letter and put it on Twitter. One Don't person says you should type it and put it on Twitter. One person says you should make a video and put it on Instagram. One person says you should explain what happened and put it on Instagram. One person says you should apologize and put it on Instagram and Twitter. Another person says you should write an apology. Another genius says that you should uh, make a video of an apology. Another one says you should make a sketch about it and put that out. Another one says go on stage, do a set about it and put that out. Literally, nobody. There was very, very few. Shane Gillis and Ari Shafir were the only two that matched up, which was whatever you do, do not apologize. The third guy that I golfed with, me, Ron White, and the third guy who's not a comedian and not in the industry whatsoever, also said, whatever you do, do not apologize. He said that that day. And he called me that night. I don't, I, didn't know, I don't even know how he got my number. He called me that night and he goes, Tony, I know you're really going through it. I saw your golf game earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, don't apologize. Meanwhile, and I'm not going to name any names, but a lot of people say, look, you just have to, it's just like some kind of apology, just a quick little, hey, I misspoke, I did it. And I'm thinking to myself, I didn't misspeak. It's jokes, and it's my style, it's what I do. If I want to call somebody a fucking cunt, or a dick, or a this or that, there's no magical words to it. If I think it's funny at that time, for that moment, in that place, then that's me. I'm the most professional person to know. I'm the doctor to diagnose that special case, right? So I just, and again, I gotta tell you, so many geniuses of wild, wild success and wild wealth mentioned apologizing. I just couldn't believe it. There's still this tug of war, even though I don't want to, and even though I'm talking with them about, I don't think that's the right move. I don't think it's the right move. It's so hard to tell people that are, you know, wildly successful um, that I think they're wrong about this, especially when the entire world is going, this is the worst guy in the world right now. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, am I fucking crazy? Am I losing my fucking mind? Am I really wrong about this? Should I apologize for making fun of somebody? But I hold strong. Now it's day three. I, ate, I remember eating a, a slice of pizza that night the second day and that was all that I ate the entire day and as you can tell I'm very skinny so if my metabolism is so fast that if I miss a meal or two I look skinny and gaunt and gross and now we're basically waking up on morning 72 hours right? 24 24 48 well, I guess it's 48 morning 48 I don't know anyway now I've had a little bit of that sushi before the phone call with Joe and a slice of pizza the next day, maybe a slice and a half. I remember thinking, I can't believe how not hungry I am. This is so weird that I'm not hungry at all. And I'm a fucking, I'm one of those like uh, Joey Chestnuts type of characters. You know, the hot dog eating champion? No. You might not be famous for you. You, no. you leave your eggs on the fucking <laughs> house. But Joey Chestnuts is a famous skinny guy who beats everybody in the world at eating hot dogs. For some reason, he can eat fucking 300 hot dogs in 10 minutes. And I eat like that. I'm gross. Like, I can eat fucking a bowl of spaghetti that big if I wanted to. I fucking hate you, Karen. It's amazing. And um, so I remember thinking, how am I not eating? Anyway, but I'm just trying to take you guys to what it's like, you know, when you're wronged by everybody and everything. And, you know, your friends are there for you, which is great. But still, when you open your phone, you're on the front page of fucking everything for a joke. Mind boggling. Um, and at this point, let me remind you that at this point, you know, morning three, um, or the start of the third full day, let's put it that way, right? Because it started at fucking 5.30 a.m. on technically Monday night, Tuesday morning. So now we're waking up Thursday, these WME drops, Tony Hinchcliffe articles are everywhere, and Pang Dang is going on a media blitz. 
accepting everything. Every single thing that reached out to me, he did. Yes, I can't believe what he did to me. He's so terrible. And he hasn't reached out in any way. He hasn't apologized. He had, doesn't care. It seems like he's, and he's adding more stuff. He's basically giving himself away in a lot of ways. In one um, interview, he talks about how he saw me the night before opening for Joe Rogan. And so he knew that I had Asian jokes. Like he's like giving himself away. Now it's starting to make sense to me. So I go, okay. He asked Red Band if he can record after he found out that he was bringing me up. Like I start doing the math on it. And I don't know what happens. Look, I don't know how it works. And I'm sure deep down, Peng Dang is probably, you know, somewhere in there, a good guy that just made a massive mistake. And I don't know how it works with China. I, I think none of us do, right? It's a big, mysterious blur. But, pandemic tours that time. Mm -hmm. And I'd imagine you get rewarded, though, for doing what they want. I'd imagine that maybe, I don't know, whatever it may be. Your As family. an aside, what I find kind of weird is him doing that, right? He still wants 3,000 Twitter followers. <laughs> I'm like, what did you do this for? Oh, it's crazy. Oh, it's crazy. And you should see, you know. And, I, and again, you know, I've never done anything. I could have, I could have had the entire, I could have made it a thing. Mm -hmm. I could have made it my identity. I could have told the Kill Tony fan base, let's get him. I could have done all of these things. And I just think he fucked up. And I think he knows he fucked up. And I think it's going to follow him forever. Um... In a way, I kind of feel bad for him, but I don't, because it was a true assassination attempt. Let there be no question. This was not hurt feelings. This was not, um, this was not, it's not what he said it was. I don't believe it for a fucking second. You, he contravened the golden rule, which is you do not do that to a colleague. Oh yeah. You do not see a joke, especially in a new material night. Mm -hmm. and then record it and put it on the internet and then put create, orchestrate a pile on it. You don't do that. And again, the editing of the thing is magical. Um, you know, about 15, 20 seconds after he uh, cuts it at the end, you know, um, at the end of me, I think the last thing I say, all you guys out here are hooting and hollering. Like, it seems like I'm mad at the audience for laughing at him, the way that the clip goes. But what's funny is that if you watch the video, uh, about 15 seconds after that, um, I literally say, come on, lady, relax. You're the only one not having fun. What do you think I'm being serious up here? Like, I'm literally, I totally acknowledge that I'm fucking just being a crazy dark freak we'll be back with the interview in one minute working every day five high grade travel packet to claim this spirit about everybody i'm gonna store from people again i think it was 2021 when kobe died or was it 2020 right 2020 about? yeah early 2020 i think and um and uh they hold strong with the no apology. I'm talking with Ari a lot, who really, 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 really ended up when the smoke cleared being my top advisor, which is kind of crazy because he's a renegade, you know, a lawless, amazing big brother. And I talked with him about how, you know, I have the video of his set and my set. If he put out my material, why shouldn't I put out his material in full length? You know, retaliation is a hell of a thing because we're probably going to find out with this new Israel-Palestine thing that's happening. You know, you don't want to mess with somebody that has the fucking Iron Dome, right? I don't know if that analogy makes any sense. But Iron Dome is defensive, so no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but still, they've got resources, I think, is what you're saying, yeah. Tony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to... Um, you know, I wanted to get it out there, but I wanted to get it out through a good vessel. And it was actually Ari's suggestion that we put out both sets, his set, his whatever, 10 minute set and my whatever, 15 minute set. And let's just put it out and let's not edit a thing. Let's not speed up the intro like he did. Let's leave his anti-white pro-Asian. And by the way, another thing that happened is that when 
the clip that he put out happens and I call him a filthy little C word and I go, oh, we make it a gunpowder. We do with this, we do with that. I, do, I hit like three Asian stereotypes. Oh, the soy sauce. I'm referencing what he was talking about during his set, literally. That's what he was talking about. It sounds like I'm rambling off these Chinese stereotypes, but it's him being a cornball and me letting the audience know, you just saw a Chinese guy doing corny Chinese jokes. But again, the clip makes me look fucking <laughs> terrible. <laughs> um, so we decide that we're going to put it out on Ari Shafir's YouTube channel, and it was a wild success. I mean, it blew up both sets back to back, showing that holy shit, not only was he doing unbelievable kind of, I mean, really weirdly anti-white material um, and corny Asian jokes, but I, you know, just to graze over it, when you watch both sets full length, it's the 20 seconds that made world news for three days is fucking nothing, because it all makes sense. Context is goddamn everything. And the set that I had was fun and silly. Again, it was a workout set. So I'm doing crowd work, I'm in and out, I'm having fun, I'm very loose. Where he was doing a very, you know, tight, like he's like trying to make it in Austin, yeah. Texas, that set. That set was a big deal to him and a shoot around for me. So um, the thing comes out and he clamps up. Um, he absolutely stops every single scheduled media thing because he realized he fucked up. He had no idea that I had the nuclear warhead, which is both of our sets unedited. Um, and I mean, I got word from someone that um, he had to beg CBS to stop uh, from running a 60 minutes or whatever it was, like it was about to be a big thing and it's him going, please stop. I, 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 we can't, I have to stop. Like he hit full breaks um, and thank God, you know what I mean? If I don't have that video, and it's funny because I just mentioned this dinner with Joe, we were talking about how crazy cancellations are and I go, if I didn't have that video of both sets, who the fuck knows where we're at? And instead, people got to see that I was just being me on a random night, not attacking somebody, not attacking somebody's race. And, you know, by the way, if he would have come up to me that night and said anything, we could have talked about it, A, but that wasn't the thing, that wasn't what he wanted it's not what he needed and it's not what would have benefited him again whatever however this Chinese media thing works whatever was supposed to happen there I mean technically he's a spy let's face it right technically in some way what he was doing was you know he's infiltrated America in order to you know cause a ruckus of some kind there's, there's how does the Chinese media release that he tweets at 11.15 in America when he didn't, when it's not 11.15 in America, when the fucking tweet happens at 11.15? Crazy, right? Oh, there's a fucking drone. Chinese <laughs> <laughs> um, fly China, drone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, the video gets released. I go on stage on Sunday night, again, Vulcan Gas Company, a random throwaway show that I'm not scheduled to be on. Um, I pop in and um, to the most amazing pop of applause that I've ever gotten in my entire life. And um, I talked about it and it was, uh, again, this is corny, but I, I was fucking like almost emotional mm -hmm. afterwards. It was, I was, it had been, five days and there I was doing what I loved to do and I had jokes about it and it, it's, it's always been my therapy you know again for a decade and a half that's how I've handled everything whether it be a friend that kills themselves or a tragic accident or a grandma dying or this or that or whatever I do it on stage and there I was talking about being on stage while on stage five days after I'm thinking maybe maybe I remember one comedy club owner uh, said, you know, and this is like on the Wednesday, this is like 24 hours in, she goes, you know, Tony, in about a year, everything should be back to about normal. And there I was on Sunday, and everything was better than normal. 
and it changed me. When you get wronged, um, you're, I think you're going, it, it made me go after the laugh instead of waiting for it to come to me. I was more bloodthirsty for um, having a fucking great set. It's, I'm gonna show you motherfuckers that this isn't like, you know, this, this is what I do. This is my everything. So anyway, yeah. That, that is such a powerful lesson in that, Tony, because there's a lot of people who would have let that experience destroy them, mm -hmm. who would have gone under. And you can understand it as well, because it was unfair, it was a media pylon. But I don't think people watching this realize what it means to an actor or an agent, to, or to an actor or a comedian, to sign with a big agent. I was gonna say big agent there, that's a very different thing. <laughs> but yeah. it's a moment of validation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that moment you've been working towards, the promised land, you're gonna be able to get this or access it. And for all of that to disappear like that, yeah. because of a joke you made at a new material night, mm -hmm. when the entire rule of the new material night is we're gonna say stuff, it might not be funny, and we might cross the line, but that's the point, because we're working it out together. Mm -hmm. On a Thursday night, in my hometown, not listed on the show, uh, all of it. it was a perfect storm of this isn't right. I'm an insult comedian. And even then, here's another fun fact, is my Wikipedia changed that week, that day or whatever. It went from American insult comedian to, you know, disgraced comedian or something like that. Immediately, the first line, whatever it was. Disgrace, is that the right thing? Whatever it was. But it changed. Someone changed it from insult comedian because it didn't match their fucking storyline. But it had been insult comedian forever. I didn't care. I don't even love the term insult comedian. I don't know who puts it there. I don't know who writes these things, but they're not that wrong. I mean, on stage, my stand-up isn't really just, it's not one, you know, it's not uh, one-sided like that. It's a little bit of a diverse portfolio of making fun of a ton of stuff. But um, I always found it interesting that that was the first line and then it wasn't the first line when I insulted somebody. When it was actually relevant. Yeah. yeah. Right. So let me ask you something about the media because <clears throat> I'm curious to know what you think about whether they were click hunting, whether they maybe just don't know comedy, maybe they didn't know enough about you, or do you think it was malicious? They, they went after you because they knew this was their moment to make some make I think money, it was multi-pronged in that way. I think, you know, a lot of these articles had me as frequent Joe Rogan guest, friend of Joe Rogan, Joe uh. Rogan friend. And at the time, he's burying them with a shovel. And I mean, he still is. And he was years before that. Yeah. And he's going to be years But well, he's talking now. to people about vaccines yeah. at this time. Totally. They're all piling on. 100%. Him. The right. Even the US government are piling on. Biden spoke about it. Well, his press secretary. Oh, his press secretary, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Spoke about what? They spoke about Joe. Spoke when about was that? Uh, around that time. Oh, yeah. 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 I, think. I mean, yeah. Chaotic times. So totally you think they were kind of going, this is a guy we can use to shit on Joe? That. I think it was perfect clickbait. I think they had a weird thing with Asian hate at the time. I think <laughs> I think um, they're coming off of the George Floyd thing. Yeah. Yep. And they're like, ooh, this could be a new... This could be a new market for us. <laughs> I, I, I'm serious. I'm, se I'm not even kidding. I really... They're fucking disgusting. They're nothing burgers. And, and you know, the, a couple of them actually stuck me on the phone. They're so sly and slimy. They go, no, I'm not... I don't know how they got my number, by the way. Which is also creepy They're as They're fucking fuck. good at getting your number. Yeah, yeah. weird. Yeah. And I go, no, thank you. I can't do it, but I don't hang up the phone. I'm not interested in having any statement on this whatsoever. Well, are you thinking about putting out a statement? No, well, not really. I mean, I, you know, they, they keep you on the phone. They're fucking dirty dogs. And that's their entire everything. Um, you know, so, yeah, I think it was a multi-pronged effect. They, they, it was racism less than a year after George Floyd, but in a whole new market, kind of like a new twist. Um, the, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> I think there was, you know, I think they love downplaying stand-up comedy. I think that it hurts them to have people really out there, you know, single-handedly having a voice. 
than an opinion on things, which is what they really want, right? These media outlets want to sneak their opinion or their take in on things and they supposedly aren't allowed to, but that obviously changed half a decade ago or however long ago when it started really being silly. Um, but you know, it. the crazy thing is, is that when they try to cancel you and they're wrong, it makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. I've seen it with Ari Shafir. I've seen it with Shane Gillis. I've seen it with myself. And we've all seen it with Joe Rogan. Yeah. When it's not real, it makes you stronger. When it is real, it I'm sure it gets you. I'm sure it takes you down. I don't see Cosby having a resurgence <laughs> or any of those people. You know, so many so many times I see Weinstein on the front or back of my favorite movies that I watch. And he's not coming back. No. When you did wrong, you're done. If you didn't, you're bigger. You, you can get bigger than ever. And it did again. And it's not just it made me famous. It changed me. Again, I was going after the laughs. I was swinging the bat with fucking anger instead of. Eh, <laughs> I hope you think this is funny. It's fucking funny. I was. There is an animal that kind of is created. It's an I'm going to show you mentality. And, you know, we started, it was uh, two weeks later, we started Kill Tony at Vulcan Gas Company in front of 350 people instead of 100 people. The viewership was bigger, stronger than ever. And we've doubled that continuously every few months since then. Boom, 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 boom. Just keeps getting bigger. Stand up the same thing, absolutely nonstop and at a different temperature. And, you know, everything's just better than ever. Now, my agent is the agent that my old agents hated more than <laughs> anyone. The absolute head of comedy at the biggest comedy agency, not the second biggest, which is where I was before they dropped me during the cancellation, the number one biggest, and he's their worst nightmare. He's the guy that they see in their nightmares. It's that guy. Um, and I've gotten two calls from them, my old friends at WME, <laughs> in the last only two months, saying, you know, if you ever, if anything ever goes wrong over there, we, we would love to get back in the Tony Hinchcliffe business. <laughs> and I cannot tell you. I cannot explain to you how much fucking joy it brings me. <laughs> I mean, I just sit on the other end of that phone and I just play it cool. I don't go, I bet you fucking do. <laughs> but my God, am I thinking it. Because when they get you like that, when you're down, mm. you know. You don't forget that. You not don't, at you all. You don't forget no. that, no. Because that is the sign of someone's character. Oh, yeah. The sign when things go bad and people start running or they walk away or they take part in the pylon, or all, you go, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you for showing me. And you always yeah. remember the people who are there for you and you never forget the mm -hmm. people who run. It's just, it's a very simple thing. And just as cowardly and weak as I thought they were for dropping me when the times were dark, I, I, I think that maybe even more cowardly, I find them crawling back with sold out arenas and sold out theaters on my schedule. It's almost as disgusting to beg for forgiveness when someone is obviously thriving than it is to stab them in the back when, you know, they are down and out. I mean, how weak, how gross to show your character like that. It's unbelievable. But I like to fuck with them, so I go, yeah, yeah, I'll keep, I'll keep thinking about that. Yeah, if anything ever goes wrong, if, it, if anything goes wrong with this, uh, and again, I mean, it's literally like, it's the dream situation. Because it's the hope that kills you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're talking, they're like, no, 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 I swear, like, he sounds fine. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah he, six months to a year, he'll be back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we built a strong rapport with <laughs> <laughs> <Five idiots. laughs> uh, Listen, morons. it's good to have you on the show. It's good to see you thriving. Yeah. Um, and this is what, this is, you know what, I started the interview by saying when we had Uncle Roger on, he said, you know, this is the show you're going when you get cancelled. This is why we have people on who have been cancelled, because people need to hear this story. They need to hear that if you have been treated unfairly, don't apologize. 
get the support of your friends and you and then lean into it and we saw you do a stand a set at the mothership and i can totally feel what you're talking about yeah. you're like an animal on stage now you really are you go on there there's no apology there's no hesitation you you go on there with supreme confidence and i love to see it so congratulations on your success man it's awesome to see and people who get cancelled need to see this too yeah right yeah this is this is how you beat cancel culture is people who get cancelled come back stronger right that's how you win don't apologize if you didn't do something wrong if you did do something wrong apologize right yeah absolutely here's here, here's here's something that i didn't mention that i thought about a lot during that actually tony save it for locals because we've got to ask some questions from our yeah. audience head on over to locals guys we'll talk about what tony wants to talk about and ask your questions as well we'll see you on there <laughs> we promised our audience you would roast us you look like if <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha